Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode. Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope uh, I want to start by saying I hope everybody's staying safe as we're seeing the situation grow and get worse because of winter coming on and a lot of other factors. So please, please follow your public health guidelines uh, and stay safe. Now, again, thanks for taking the time to watch the show. Um, before I get, I got a lot of new stuff. It's been a couple of weeks since the last show. I uh, just want to remind people of two things. Go check out my Twitter uh, You can and all the details at the end of the show where I'm doing a fundraising campaign for uh, Feed Ontario. Uh, really just a small goal that I've set in conjunction with the Tesla's Owner Club of Ontario. Um, trying to help them raise funds as well, so collectively. So please check it out if you're interested. Please donate to that. Also, I always forget to advertise. I do it at the end of the show, but not at the beginning, that I do have a Tesla referral code, as many owners do. If you're interested in buying a Tesla, please, it would mean a lot if you could use my referral code. You'll get uh, 16, 1,500 kilometers, 1,000 miles or so of supercharging. Please do if you're interested. Great. So now, now that the promotion stuff is done, let me get into the show. Well, it's that time of the month where we had sales figures come out for the plug-in numbers for September. We're always about a month and a half, two months behind at this point. So they just came out last week. Um, and again, September was a great month for plug-in car sales globally with uh, 345,000 units uh, sold, which is up 91% year over year. So definitely EVs are having a good year so far. We may actually end up seeing a growth year. It seems to be on track for that. Uh, no surprise who the leader is again. Tesla Model 3 as an individual auto unit uh, is leading by a long shot with almost 240,000 units sold year to date as of the end of September. So again, we're a month and a half out of that. So there's going to be another huge batch. They're averaging about 40,000 uh, units a month. So you can extrapolate that out when Renault uh, stays pretty close in the Model Y, now assumes third place with pretty solid numbers, and you can see the top 10 here. Brand rank, I won't spend a lot of time. Tesla, again, number one brand, oh, just pushing 317,000 units year to date. Elon's goal was 500,000, so good luck for Tesla. I'd love to see them make that achievement. Uh, but as you can see, they're continuing to lead. Other brands are doing well, so it is a good year, and let's continue to follow it, and let's uh, hope that it does end up being a record breaking. Great news from GM that they're looking to further expansion, uh, expand their electrification efforts by hiring about 3,000 people for tech jobs as part of this EV push. They're mainly going to be in engineering, design, and IT to help push uh, predominantly the electric vehicle side of their business and more in-car connected technologies. Um, and a lot of it's going to center around the Ultium uh, platform as well framework. So if you're in the market to get into the GM, into the auto sector in EVs, uh, go check out their website for information. And a quick note that I got from Hyundai uh, recently that they've announced that they're going to offer 10 electrified vehicles uh, in the U.S. by the end of 2022. Uh, so only a couple of years. This includes four conventional hybrids. Boo on that, but whatever it is. Two plug-in hybrids, yay, and three all-electric battery-powered Cars, absolutely great, and the fuel cell Nexo. So uh, good. There's a lot of other stuff about models, which I won't get into, but basically uh, they're also going to be, uh, if you haven't heard, the Ionic brand will be their fully electric subsidiary. They're going to launch that as well and continue down a roadmap with that platform. And a quick milestone occurred uh, this month as well from Tesla. They achieved 20,000 supercharger connections installs around the world, and they continue to grow. That's quite the milestone uh, for them to have 20,000 connections. So congratulations, I, you know, Tesla owners, and I've experienced it now. I actually went and did a quick drive to purposely try to test out the, the supercharging just to see, make sure everything was working okay in my car, and it works like a charm. So uh, congratulations on them as they continue to expand as other charging providers are expanding as well it's all good news quick article about uh, from a company in Romania called uh, Dacia but they've announced an all-electric model called the spring electric uh, it's going to come out um, in uh, the next year or so the spring of 2021 is what they're hopeful for but we'll have to wait and see again with COVID what's going on now the good thing about this uh, sorry order books are going to open in the spring probably deliveries after that later part of next year the good thing is that they are pricing it very competitively to a mass market type of vehicle which is great trying to hit that uh, 20,000 a euro mark or below and you can get it for under that with incentives at about 17 a change or about 21k US so that's good 
uh, you know, not going to be anything uh, crazy from a range perspective, you know, 26.8 kilowatt hour battery pack, about 140 miles of WLTP, so shrink that down a bit, probably 125 or so, uh, 225 kilometers, 200 kilometer range. Uh, for EPA with a 6.6 .6 onboard charger and 30 kilowatt fast charging and all the other specs as you can see by the pictures in vid. So again, I'm you know uh, there are markets for more urban transportation vehicles. You can still take trips in these. Is not to say, especially if there's a charging network that will get you there. Um, so it'll be a good vehicle. Again, nice to see more happening in the mass market approach. And recently, over the last week, BMW finally uh, came out and revealed the iNext platform, or as their iX uh, electric SUV. Uh, of course, it's going to be a fairly nice vehicle uh, due to reach the U.S. in the early part of 2022. It's a mid-size battery, elect all battery electric uh, SUV based on the 2018 uh, Vision iNex concept car that came out then. It's a similar in size and shape to the BMW X5. So if you want to put it into a size category, that should help. Uh, it is based on BMW's new modular platform. Uh, which will have uh, come out in probably single and, and multiple motor variants, dual motor variants, giving up to 500 horsepower, uh, 0 0.62 in five seconds, uh, 300 mile range is what they're quoting from an EPA cycle perspective, and high speed charging up to 200 kilowatts, which is cool. That's where we kind of need to be in a lot of cases. Um, they're also going to come out with uh, SAE level three from a full self-driving or from a, excuse me, from a self-driving capability. So level three on that expected to be offered with probably more enhancements in the systems. As you can see by the pictures and video has a lot of the traditional BMW touch points like the, uh, uh, you know, the, the gear shift turning or the, uh, the turning center. Um, all that stuff, the iDrive controller, that's what I was trying to say, all that good stuff. So um, production is going to be handled uh, in Germany uh, and then shipped around the world. They're already uh, assembling some pre-production prototypes as we speak, so that's good. I don't have any pricing on this, but it won't be cheap, of course. And as I mentioned, a, a 2022 for the USA ETA and then for rest of world parts, uh, probably the later part of 2021. Let's hope they can build it and get it out there. So congratulations, BMW. And as we're talking about order books and all this kind of stuff, uh, Nissan, of course, jumped into the game recently by ordering. Uh, they say they're going to open the pre-orders for the area in the U.S. later this year. Well, we're into mid-November, so it's going to have to be within the next six weeks to hit the time frame. So maybe in December. Um, they hope to have start delivering this by the middle part of next year, let's say Q3 of 2021, at least in Japan and then later uh, after that in other markets. Um, so order books uh, should be opening. Now, they, they mentioned this to the area forums, to some of the leading forums there that this was happening. Um, so let's see what happens and let's hope they get some uh, a good number of pre-orders as well um, to help drive uh, the momentum uh, for the area platform. It's a cool looking car and I hope to see one soon. Switch gears quickly to Rivian. They have announced, uh, revealed pricing for several of their variants of the R1T electric pickup truck. They have the launch edition, of course, the Adventure and the Explore trim models, starting at 75,000 for the launch edition. These are US numbers, 75,000 for the Adventure and 67,500 for the Explore. Of course, as always, they're coming out with the most expensive models first which will be the first launch edition at uh, June 2021 is the target date now. January and uh, of both uh, January of next year, 2022, excuse me, will be the target dates for the Adventure and the Explorer models and the other trims. You can pre-order for a thousand bucks. I know a lot of people that have done that um, to waiting to receive their launch edition. Now, these are going to be the 300 mile or so versions. The more expensive 400 mile plus version will come out after these. So sometime probably 2023, 2024, and then a cheaper 250 mile version will come out around that time too. So wait and see what happens, but it's good to see more information as, and, and more solid information as Rivian continues to move forward to uh, expected deliveries. And I'm stoked for them. I look forward to seeing uh, the vehicle when it finally comes out. So I'm just quickly going to talk about the U.S. election that happened and the change in presidency that's uh, going to be happening. Um, and, you know, we know that uh, President-elect Joe Biden is very pro-EV and very pro-climate oriented as far as taking actions to help 
with uh, combat climate change. So here's a few things that we expect will happen in the U.S. Uh, concerning the EVs and the change to uh, accelerate electric cars. Um, you know, he's committed, uh, President-elect Joe Biden has committed $2 trillion to a climate agenda for all kinds of th different things, coordinating from public transportation and cities, helping them out to infrastructure spending, cash for clunkers, all kinds of different programs to help accelerate it. Um, one of the things that their government may do is revisit the fuel economy uh, requirements. That's probably going to happen. Uh, of course, uh, Trump was uh, not uh, uh, for uh, really increasing the EPA um, uh, MPG requirements and looking to actually reduce them. Uh, we, we need it to go the other way. So it looks like uh, the Biden uh, government will uh, make its case for restoring Obama era EPA ERA rules that would uh, be in place for at least the next five to six years, which would be good to help fuel um, that environment, the EV environment. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about expanding the EV tax credit in the U.S. Uh, there was a proposal put forward uh, with a 600,000 vehicle manufacturer cap instead of what it is now, and but uh, cutting the credit from $7,500 U.S. to 7000 was in last federal spending bill, which didn't go through, but it may under the new administration. Uh, and then also that would limit the uh, uh, the use of that tax credit to any households of a max income of 250 k or less. Uh, which is okay. So anything to help spur the movement. Uh, also helping to accelerate conversion of public vehicle fleets to all electric, things like school buses and, and public transit buses and things like that. There are American companies that build these. So helping to promote the Made in America by those techniques. Uh, of course, looking to expand and help with uh, the expansion of public charging infrastructure, uh, uh, looking at least 500,000 public charging stations from coast to coast. So partnering with state local governments to help uh, find some money money and, and corporations to build these out um, also fewer charging deserts and energy poverty so looking at developing a national strategy to eliminate energy poverty including the lack of uh, electricity access there is still some lack of access in rural areas and reduced uh, disparities disparities in the energy burdens try to equalize the grid from uh, from a more uh, a normal perspective and also making the grid cleaner, especially in rural America. So trying to support more sustainability and energy resilient grids and then helping uh, to finance the solution by offering to construct a new and uh, retool existing U.S. facilities to manufacture electric vehicles, including heavy duty trucks, school buses, as I mentioned, transit buses, aircraft. There's a lot of things that can be electrified. So if there's grant or if there's incentive money for corporations to help us uh, help accelerate that manufacturing, uh, it looks like the Biden administration is going to try to help out there. Also to help nurture smaller U.S. EV companies. So great for startups, of course, that are looking to to get into the platforms. I and mean, we you know I talk about a lot of them on the show here. Um, so looking to help create an investment and uh, innovation uh, hubs to help uh, these uh, organizations link up with global supply chains and try to get to market sooner. So it's all good news. We'll wait and see if that happens. But I'm excited for the U.S. moving forward in, in 2021 and beyond. And uh, we'll con I'll continue to watch and to see what happens. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks for hanging in and tuning in with me. A lot of stuff to cover. I tried to do it as quick as I could. Again, please uh, follow me on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, send me your comments. I love to read comments and answer them. If you have emails and questions, reach out. Also, always humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in helping me out, please check out my Patreon page at this link and you can get more information. Anything would help. I know these are tough times. Listen, if you're looking to donate to help some out please look at the, uh, the the food Ontario campaign that I mentioned at the beginning of the show check that out I'd love for you to put a couple of bucks towards helping charity out and I will have some more charity stuff coming up soon as well I'm gonna try to do something for the end of the year if I can um, again so continue to watch that everybody stay safe lots of stuff going on from from the big guys for GM VW all these guys continue to uh, talk about their EV scheme and how they grow so Everybody, please stay safe. And until the next show, I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.